back guys to the upper degree tales the basics of pharmacology so today we'll be discussing about a very familiar medical condition diabetes yes it's very familiar at the same time it is a very serious long term condition with a major impact on the lives and well-being of the individuals families and societies worldwide so, and half a billion people are living with diabetes worldwide it is one among the top 10 causes of death in adults so in this video i'll be talking about diabetes its different types and in the following sessions we'll be dealing with the treatment so let's get started pancreas is responsible for producing the peptide hormones which include insulin glucagon and somatostatin these hormones are being produced by the islets of langerhans cells of the pancreas These hormones are responsible for the glucose homeostasis. The insulin in particular is produced by the beta cells of Langerhans and that is responsible for the metabolism of glucose. That is when there is an increased amount of glucose in the body, the insulin is being released. That is responsible for maintaining the glucose levels within the body. What happens in diabetes? When the insulin gets deficient or when there is a lack of insulin the glucose metabolism does not take place that means there will be an elevated amount of glucose in the blood stream this will lead to diabetes or known as hyperglycemia so when do we say a patient is diabetic when the fasting blood glucose levels is equal to or more than 126 mg per deciliter So the different types of diabetes includes type 1 diabetes mellitus, type 2 diabetes mellitus, gestational diabetes, diabetes mellitus due to other causes such as genetic or any other factors. Among which the most common and very important one is the type 1 diabetes mellitus, type 2 and gestational diabetes mellitus. So in this sessions and in the following sessions we'll be talking about the different types, its symptoms, treatment which includes both non pharmacological and pharmacological such as insulin and oral hypoglycemic agents so first is type 1 diabetes mellitus this is most commonly seen in children adolescents or young children the main cause of type 1 diabetes mellitus is mainly autoimmune mediated process due to which there is a destruction of the pancreas or the islets of langerhans cells as a result there is no production of insulin these autoimmune mediated process are usually triggered by any kind of virus or environmental toxins what are the symptoms of type 1 diabetes mellitus one main thing we can observe is that those patients will be very lean that is there could be weight loss the other symptoms includes polyuria polyphagia and polydipsia simply by the three p's of type 1 diabetes mellitus polyuria is nothing else but increased urination polyphagia increased hunger polydipsia is nothing else but increased thirst so these are the basic symptoms that could lead to or that could be seen in type 1 diabetes mellitus So obviously the treatment provided for type 1 diabetes mellitus is to replace the amount or deficient amount of the insulin. This is by providing the exogenous insulin which thereby avoids hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis and helps to maintain the HbA1c. What is HbA1c? This is the glycosylated hemoglobin. It is the amount of glucose attached to the hemoglobin. So this helps us to indicate whether the accurate amount of glucose is being attached to the hemoglobin. In hyperglycemic stage, high amount of glucose will be attached to the hemoglobin and at the same time in hypoglycemic stage, less amount will be attached. So the normal HbA1c is usually within the range of 4 to 6 percent. So something more than that means you are hyperglycemic or have diabetes mellitus. type 2 diabetes mellitus this is one of the most common type of diabetes seen in the patients 90% of people with diabetes has got type 2 diabetes mellitus the factors contributing to development of type 2 diabetes mellitus is genetic factors 
aging, obesity and peripheral insulin resistance. Peripheral insulin resistance is nothing else but failure of the target tissues to increase the glucose disposal in response to the insulin. And type 2 diabetes mellitus will cause only a milder metabolic alterations. So what is the main goal in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus? Main thing is to maintain the glucose levels and hence to prevent the long term complications. So therefore the management of type 2 diabetes mellitus includes non-pharmacological and pharmacological. Non-pharmacological includes dietary control, aerobic exercise and so on. And pharmacological includes combinations of both oral hypoglycemic agents and long term we can use insulin. This graph basically shows the relation between the plasma concentration of insulin with the infusion of glucose. In a normal post-absorptive period, constant beta cell secretion maintains low basal levels of circulating insulin. This suppresses the lipolysis, proteolysis and glycogenolysis. A burst of insulin secretion occurs within 2 minutes after ingesting a meal in response to transient increases in circulating glucose and amino acids. This usually lasts for up to 15 minutes, followed by the postprandial secretion of insulin. But if you observe in type 1 diabetic patients, without the functional beta cells, these patients can neither maintain basal secretion of insulin nor respond to variations in circulating glucose. Whereas in type 2 diabetes, the pancreas retains some beta cell function. But insulin secretion is insufficient to maintain the glucose homeostasis in the face of increasing peripheral insulin resistance. Hence, the beta cell mass may gradually decline over time in type 2 diabetes. In contrast to the patients with type 1, those patients with type 2 diabetes often are obese. Obesity contributes to insulin resistance which is considered with the major underlying defect of the type 2 diabetes. Next is the gestational diabetes. As the name suggests, the main population being affected is the pregnant women. So it is defined as the carbohydrate intolerance with onset of first recognition during the pregnancy. The uncontrolled gestational diabetes could lead to fetal macrosomia that is abnormally large body, shoulder dystocia that is difficulty in delivery and last the neonatal hypoglycemia. The common treatment strategies include dietary control, exercise such as swimming, cycling and aerobic exercises, yoga and or insulin administration. Glyburide and metformin may be reasonable alternatives to insulin therapy for gestational diabetes. So these are the different types of diabetes mellitus. So I hope you have understood that and if there's any suggestions or any comments, Please do mail in us. Thank you.